Well, today we are going to talk about how to maintain our health. We introduced this topic that health is not something absolute, that we don't depend upon anything, yeah, that we can, we can live independently at all levels, at all times. That's not the health. Health is the adequate independence in physical and mental activities of daily living. And how do we do that? So today we would like to get a first and overall view that what science has been doing, what are the approaches, scientific approaches for maintaining health. And by maintaining health, we will get lots of advantages. Advantage can be also prevention of diseases or treatment of diseases or living longer. But that, as a scientist, I won't be talking about those aspects. But maintaining health now, why should I be healthy now? Not by the fear of some disease which may happen to me in 20 years time. But I need to be healthy now so that what I can do and what I want to do, I should be able to do. If I want to enjoy my life with my grandchildren, I should be healthy enough to be able to interact with them. If I want to travel somewhere, if I want to read something. So adequate health is needed and there are fantastic ways being developed. And primarily, of course, there are drugs also coming there, but primarily we will talk about lifestyle issues because those are take care of the whole body, holistic. So basically, scientifically, we divide these interventions into three or four categories. One is called the ad hoc help, that whatever is going wrong in the body, you try to fix it. Yeah, that's the most common biomedical approach. If I have broken some bones, it, they will be corrected. If there is something, uh, some organ is failing, even transplantation can happen. We can get new knees, we can get new kidneys, we can get new heart. But they don't deal with the whole process of life. They deal with the problem which is there and which needs urgent treatment. Like serious infection comes, we have to take bacteria, antibiotics, we have to take drugs for that. But it does not affect the whole life processes. So even stem cell therapies, which we are talking so much these days, yes, stem cells can help that particular part of the body where things are going wrong but they do not deal with the aging process, the life processes. So these ad hoc treatments, one thing at a time are very useful. That is what biomedicine has been all about in the last almost 200 years. And we should never underestimate their importance. That's a question of survival and death, immediate survival and death. So you will be saving yourself from serious infection, but you are still going to live. But that infection has maybe left some scars of some kind. That's one category, okay? The second category, of interventions which we use in aging research is what we call replenishment. Yeah, because whatever goes down in the body, let's take it back. Yeah, this hormone goes down, you take that, that hormone as a therapy. Or you have this a kind of a enzyme activity, this antioxidant decreases with age, you take it. This is the most popular approach that whatever is decreasing or changing, you try to set it back to some original level. It's a nice sounding approach, but it doesn't work. Why? Because a lot of things which happen in our bodies when we are living long process, that is a sign of adaptation. The body is trying to change to survive better. You don't need high levels of sex hormones in old age. Testosterone has to be lower for a better life. Even insulin has to be somewhat lower. Yes, if it becomes too low, it gives problem. But body is trying to adjust these things at a reduced level because it's very costly for the body to keep making those enzymes, those hormones which are not being needed anymore. So just taking them back as a form of pills doesn't work. Sometimes it might even do harm. Special story is about antioxidants. We are obsessed with antioxidants, antioxidants. If I give you an antioxidant, which will take away all your oxidants or all your free radicals, what will happen? I will be dead in a millisecond. Yeah? Because we, we need free radicals and oxidants for basic biochemistry. 
Every time I breathe, I create lots of free radicals. And those free radicals are actually needed for survival. If I take away all the free radicals, I will be dead. All infection fighting needs free radicals, reactive oxygen species. So this basic simplistic view that antioxidants will take care of the oxidants and I can take it and eat it and I will live forever is absolutely wrong. In our area of research and science, in the science of aging, there is no evidence which shows that if a healthy person takes antioxidants, that it does anything good to them. A sick person, maybe in some diseases, yes, it can. I will not again go into that uh, clinical part of the story. But as a healthy person, if I just take antioxidants or multivitamin pills and whatever, yes, I think I have done some job, I have taken something, but generally it just goes through the body. It keeps the industry running, everybody's happy, I feel happy that I have taken a pill. But scientifically, nothing is happening in the body. Yeah? If there is a deficiency, like vitamin D. Now, sometimes my doctor measures it and I can see, oh, it has gone too low. Yes, I must take it to bring it to some. But those things, for a healthy point of view, if you are already healthy and having peaceful, nice life with good food, regular life, these things do not add any extra dimension to that. So that is a big story. That's called the replenishment. Most of the time, replenishments don't work. Then the third part of the intervention is what we call the holistic interventions. Now here, as a scientist, I want to make a uh, clear statement about what do I mean by holistic? Because everybody uses this word. Yeah, you jump around, you dance around, and it's a holistic. You do who, ha, he, who, and that's a holistic. No, holistic, in English language, I will put a W in front with whole. Whole means total. Not H-O-L-E whole, which means a little hole where everything falls down. So scientists want to be holistic because we understand that our bodies are so complex. Everything depends upon everything else, both in terms of biology and also psychology and also sociology, how society affects me. So what are those holistic approaches where scientists are coming in a big way, and especially in my own research about 20 years ago, when I got into that area of holistic approaches, that really changed the shape of things to come. So we will talk about that in the next talk. See you then.